فاختلق به نبات الأرض فاختلق به نبات الأرض فأصبح هشيما تدره الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا صدق الله العظيم نحن على ذلك من الشاهدين So just to quickly go over uh, what we mentioned last time إن شاء الله We're talking about Yes, Sahib the story of the garden the story the, the, the story of the two men and one of uh, one of which had a garden uh, and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a lot of blessings in that garden and um, that caused him later on to attribute it to himself and once he did that he did zulm of himself he did injustice to himself and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he made the you know the other uh, believer feel a little, a little bit bad and so the da'wah of the believer came and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know destroyed the two guards that he gave him just to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave him and uh, that a person should always remember that he came from nothing and so a human being can can go into nothing like uh, you know Zakaria alayhi salam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him um, Bishara gave him a good news of a of a child to come he said how can I have a child when, and, he, and he gave reasons for it, you know. Um, my wife can't bear children. I'm old in age. This and this and this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, didn't I create you? Or, you know, I created you before. Just like I created you. I can create a child for you as well. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam also had children at an old age when the, the angels came to, to, tell his, you know, to tell him in, in, in his house and his household. His wife couldn't believe it. She fasakat wajaha. She, she clapped on her, on her face. She kind of um, out of shock from, from this news. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do anything. He can give things to anyone and he can take away things from anyone. And we have to know, as we will see inshallah from the next ayat, that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is good. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is in, uh, in the end good. Uh, cool. So that's just the recap of last time. Um, I want to make a, a quick side note of something that I, uh, that I really enjoyed listening to before about al-akhlaq, which is character and attaining a good character. So, uh, you know, some people talk about like charisma, some people talk about kind of magnetism, some people talk about, you know, like uh, speaking skills. But what is good character? Is it all these skills that someone can just uh, kind of take a course on and of course, you know, work hard for and get, or is character something deeper? <coughs> and so, from the Islamic understanding of character, it says, بَذْلَ الْمَعْرُوفِ It's ihsan. It's to give from whatever good that you have, قَوْلًا وَفِعْلًا In words, and also in action. وَكَفَّلْ uh, وَكَفَّلْ أَذَا قَوْلًا وَفِعْلًا And, and to, um, you know, kind of keep people away from anything bad that you could afflict them with, in words and in action. And it comes down to five things. Al-hilm. Al-hilm uh, means to be kind of to be kind, to be nice to people, to be uh, easygoing. You know, um, when someone does something bad against you, that you forgive them. This is all part of al-hilm. And one should have this when he's in, in a when he's in a, in a high position, and also when he when he is when he is in. Uh, a position, uh, you know, a position of power and a position of weakness when he has uh, the blessings and when he is in a lack of something, you know, uh, and this also applies to al jud. Al jud is giving without asking. Someone doesn't ask you for something, but you go ahead and give it to them. You know, this is al jud. Wa um, al sabr. Al sabr is patience. To have patience. You know, when something afflicts you or when someone uh, does something bad to you, you're patient. Watib uh, al nafs is to have a, a good, like um, a calm self, so that whenever someone tells you something, you could take it in two ways, positive or negative. Always err towards the positive side. Uh, yeah, and and you know, it's not uh, complicated. Don't have complicated thoughts. 
وصحة القيم and to have good principles. So those are just some things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call us through in the Quran. And people who have this, the Quran will expand it further. And people who are lacking in one, the Quran will come in and try to rectify. اليوم, uh, today, Muhannad was talking, Al-Mu'min Mir'at, Al-Mu'min. The believer is the mirror of his, of his, of his brother. Right? And so when we see something that could be improved in our brother, first we ask, okay, is it something that I have? Is it something that I can improve? That's question number one. Question number two, how can I help my brother? Not how can I tell him off, how can I make him feel bad that he has this or that? No, how can I help him? And first, uh, the first mode of contact is to help him with actions without saying a single word. To show him that there is a better way to do this by doing it yourself. For example, sometimes I'm, I'm dealing with uh, you know, my, a few of my siblings and they're, and they're kind of relaxing and doing something. And so I, uh, you know, maybe my parent asked them to do something. And so they, they kind of, they're very late to do it. They're lazy to get up. They don't want to get up, you know, and then, you know, and they say it twice and a third time, right? So what do I do? I, before, or before I used to like shout to them, hey, get up. Mom said this or dad said this, you know, you should go and do it. But now what I just do is, you know, I, I do go by example. When mom says it, so you know, you know what, I, I want to beat you too. I want to get the ajr for it. So I go and do it, all right? After a while, they start feeling bad and then they go do it. So, so this, is, um, this is a way to get people to do something with, with you know, by doing something without, without saying anything as well. And then the second mode of contact is, is by saying it, um, making it clear and obvious. Some people don't understand, you know, uh, they say الزكي من لمحة والحمار من رفزة you know the, uh, the, the smart one he can get it by a wink he'll understand when you wink at him but the donkey he'll get it by a kick <laughs> so, we, so some people they don't understand the wink right so you have to go through more uh, more difficult methods to have them understand and so the Quran will also do this we'll see in these ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, صَرَفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثْلٍ We've given all sorts of examples. We've given easy examples and hard examples. We've given examples from history, examples from the future. We've given examples of how you were created and what you're going to go to. All sorts of examples are given in the Qur'an. You know? وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا And people just kept on arguing. You know? Human being just likes to argue. So, uh, sorry, I'm getting carried on. I want to do something before we carry on into the ayat, inshallah. I want to uh, uh, pop quiz, inshallah, on <laughs> Surat Kah pop quiz. So, I'm, um, I want to say a, a few words, and whoever can recognize where this is from in Surat Al Kah, from what we've covered already, uh, please tell me where it comes from. Okay. Uh, let's go. Easy or hard? Hard? <laughs> Medium? Okay, let's, let's start hard. If it's too hard, then I'll go to easy. Okay, sabara. So sabara, what does sabr mean? Patience. Patience. Where is it coming, Kaf? Please, Azam. MashaAllah. Could you remind us of what that means? <coughs> Yeah, was with nafsak, ma'aladina. Who, maybe even harder. What's when is sabr gonna come back in the surah? Ah, fad. Yeah, in the story which inshallah we're gonna try to cover today, the story of Musa alayhi salam and the khidr. So second one, the the root word. I'm gonna go harder. The root word is ha, wow, ra. Hawara. Where has this came up? Where, where has this come up before? Aza. MashaAllah, I'm going I'm to ask you to not answer the next one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, MashaAllah, Zakallah khair. That's, that's true. But, um, uh, Can you remind me of what that meant? Um, and so he, this is regarding the two men. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He wants him to comment on yeah. on whatever he's talking about. Oh, my garden is so big. Oh my, yeah. you know, I just got uh, I just got a huge uh, like a uh, payday or or whatever it was, you know. Or I have so, I have so much money, so many problems. Yeah. Do you have problems? Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. So how are right? What about ba kha ain? Ba kha ain. Anyone? Oh yes, Ahmed. Yes. MashaAllah. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ Could you remind us of what بَاخِع means? Could anyone say what بَاخِع means? Anyone know what بَاخِع means? The whole ayah is So you would da 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 upon their remains. It's, it's the ayah is to calm the Prophet yeah. What does بَاخِع mean? Hint. Uh, it's to do with grief. Anyone? Sorry? Almost. Mourning, grief, yeah. Bakhir means to afflict some, some, some yourself with something in grief. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ is to uh, so you would kill yourself in grief is what we said and I like a back on us upon their remains if they don't believe in this message uh, okay so could someone give me the ayah of uh, uh, insha'Allah where does insha'Allah come Khalid. yes before that the ayah before it no, that's the ayah. Where is the ayah of MashaAllah come? Yes. And if you don't, uh, you know, and why is it the case that you don't enter your garden and say, MashaAllah, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted? There is no power unless, uh, you know, except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Um, Pop quiz. I don't know how much I'll, I'd give you for that, to be honest. <laughs> you guys. Um, inshallah, next time will be better. Yeah? Revise. I'm, I'm, it won't be a pop quiz. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm, uh, telling you. All right. <clears throat> so the ayah we, we stopped at last time was وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Strike the example. ضَرَبَ مَثَلًا Something you can't really translate to English. It means to, to strike an example, but you don't really strike an example in English. It's, it's incorrect in, in English, but in Arabic, it's something that uh, was um, accepted classically. وَضْرِبْ uh, لَهُمْ It means kind of um, to be impactful, almost to hit them with the example. You see? Hit them with this example. You see what I mean? So وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا To give something impactful, to make a difference, you know? وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا The example of worldly life كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض like water that came down from the sky from the sky I was uh, ما إن it's not it doesn't say الماء it says you know some water that came down from the sky it's not too much water it's just some water that came down from the sky so we said that this is a uh, this related to something that we this related to something in the human being who can tell me what that thing was water was a parable to Something in, in the in the human being. Sorry. <laughs> the soul of the human being, exactly. And uh, min and so it it mixed, bihi nabatul ard. It mixed with you know the kind of the dirt of the ground. hashiman and later it became like. Um, Scattered like like dust. Hashim is something like stubble. It's crushed, lifeless. It's worthless. It's dry. It doesn't it doesn't have any value. So after a, so this is basically Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us Hashim is uh, typically used for a plant once it dies. 
So once a, a plant dies, it kind of it dries out and it kind of goes on the ground. It has no strength anymore. Any any wind can blow it right and left. Tadruhu riyah, you know. Even the ayah says the wind blows it right and left. And so we know that life has three stages. You have birth, you have life, and you have death. So what what's birth? In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the example. Birth as when the water comes out of the sky. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blows the, uh, the soul into the human being. Um, you know. فَاخْتَلَطَ and بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ And so, and so the, it kind of, it, it joins itself. It mixes itself with the, human, with the human body. So we know that the human body is made up of three, I always say. Of the mind, of the body, and of the soul. So the soul mixes itself in with these three things. Or with the other two things. And, and it becomes a soul and you have, uh, you know, um, you do your actions and, and, and you go out through your day. Uh, and so, means when a plant dies. So the end of its life, basically. You know, so the beginning is mentioned, the water coming down from the sky. And the end is mentioned. Is the middle mentioned? It's not mentioned. What does that mean? It means that it's something that's insignificant in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When, you know, the, the beauty of this world is insignificant in, in, in comparison to the akhirah, in comparison to the life of the hereafter. In other ayah, وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ The the next life is the true, is the true living. تَذْرُوهُ الْرِيَحِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was muqtadir. There's qadir and there's muqtadir. means to be powerful over something. But Qadir means that you to have power. Muqtadir actually means when you, um, when, you, when you have power and you are exercising it in every step of the way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we wake up, He was there. You know, when we go to sleep, He was there. Uh, when we're eating, He was there. Whenever we get anything that's pleasurable, He was there. Whenever something bad afflicts us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. You know, some people, they lose hope. They say, where's Allah, where's Allah when this and this and this happened? You know, and they kind of lose hope. We can't be from those people. We have to know that there's a purpose for everything that happens. And this is tying to, inshallah, to, uh, to the story of Musa alayhi salam al Khadr. And so he continues. Um, Money and kids, they are the beauty of this world. You know, money can, you know, can get you nice things, can get you good food, can get you nice clothing can get you good experiences, you can travel around. And kids, they leave a legacy. So even after you die, you know, your name is carried on. Uh, there'll be someone to, to come in and say, you know, my dad used to do this and this and this, or my grandfather used to do this and this and this, and they'll remember you for it. Zinatul Hayat al dunya They're the beautification of this world. You know? Uh, and, and so when they're the beautification of this world, there's two forms of zina. One that stops here, and one that remains. What is the zina that stops here? Is when we enjoy it, we, we have a good laugh, uh, we do what we want to do, and then we move on. Like the, like the plants that we were just talking about. You know, the, the, the water came down and the plants came out. As soon as it came out, almost, they kind of withered away. You know, they, uh, they, they just wither away. You don't know, uh, you know, the, the, the time in between that is really short. But there's another form of zina that Allah is talking about. And it's, it comes in الصالحات, The zina that lasts. So when you have children, when you have money, and you spend it in the, sake of, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says it's like the example of a seed that comes out of the ground. You know, one pound in the sake, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will uh, you know, return the reward for you. Up, you know, it's like seven seeds that come up. And each seed grows a hundred more seeds. In another part of the Quran. So 700, uh, 700 times. وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ And Allah increases whoever He wills. Or whoever He wants. And so there's no limit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how much He can give you reward for even a small deed. وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ And الْبَاقِيَاتُ something that remain. Where is the life of remaining? Is it this world or the next world? This world. I heard, I heard this world. No? The next world. الباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا. It's something better to hope for. It has better, it's better ثواب for your master. The Prophet, the Allah subhanahu wa taala is addressing the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He's sending him to your master. The next world is better. 
you know, it's better as a reward and it's better as something to hope for. So I remember I was walking down, uh, this one time I uh, was walking with a sheikh on the road, right? And so he'd, he'd been talking a lot, so I expected, I expected us just to walk and not say anything. But something caught his eye and he had to say something, you know? He just had to stop and ponder upon this one thing and he had to do it out loud so that I heard, you know? So we walked upon some, uh, like a banquet of flowers, just some flowers that, they were, that were going by. So this happened once. Two weeks later, we were walking along the same road. But now he looked at the flowers and he saw that the flowers were withered. He saw the flowers were kind of, they, they, you know, the, the blooming season went down and it's kind of falling, crumbling to the ground slowly. And in another week's time, they'd replace them. This is the cycle of life. And so he looked at that and he says, you know, you know what this is? So I said, uh, so I said yeah, like flowers. <laughs> he, said, he said, no, this is life. He said, you know, uh, once we saw them, they were in full bloom, as is life. You come upon the results of something that you've worked so hard for, or you come upon, you know, mal wa banun. You come upon, uh, you know, great riches or, great, or a great legacy, something to leave behind. But then it doesn't last. After just a few weeks, it goes. And, you, and, and then he came and told me, you, so, you know, some people, told me, some people say that this is, it's, life is long. You know, life is long, man. We have how many years? 40, 50, 60 years. Some people live up to 100 years. But he said, no, life isn't long. He said, I'm, he, he told me, you know, I'm 40 years old at the moment. It was just like yesterday, I was, I was 11 years old. Mashallah, he, he, he would give khutbahs at 11 years old. And, uh, and so, he, so he told me, you know, it was, it was just like yesterday, I started giving khutbahs. And now I'm 40 years old. And, and you, know, it's, you know, me the same person. It's like nothing happened. It's just like, like a second and suddenly I'm 40 years old. And another second, I find myself, I can't speak anymore. Another second, خلاص. That's life. You know? الصالحات خير عند ربك. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's better for us. He knows that what lasts is better for us. And this is Dar al-Akhirah. And so this is Dar al-Akhirah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shifts the scene. We're talking about dunya, what happens in dunya. We talked about the two gardeners. Um, you know, and and what uh, and just another point about the gardeners, the water that came down from the sky, it gives life, doesn't it? It gives life to the plants. But what all what what also what um, destroyed his garden? He said two things can destroy his garden. Can someone tell me what either either one of the two? He said husbana min sama, which means, you know, like a flood. Or he said, يُصْبِحُ Or the water can, can, or the water, the spring in between them, or the river in between them can be sucked into the ground. You know? So what was the cause of the destruction of his garden? Wasn't it water? Water gave life to the garden. Water also destroyed his garden. You know? Water in too much can destroy what we have. Some people, they get money. They can't handle it. They go crazy. Some people win the, win the lottery. You know, ma'adullah, don't do that, guys. Uh, some people win the lottery and then they, they go crazy they don't know how to handle the money and they end up poorer than they were and more miserable and some people they're so happy with their achievements they're so happy with their legacy you know that it, cause, it causes them to be arrogant and it causes them to do uh, you know to make mistakes and those mistakes are their downfall you know الصالحات, having those akhlaq that we talked about sabr, having um, what else do you talk about we talked about uh, al-hilm, al-sabr, al-jud, you know, kindness and being uh, kind-hearted and being patient. These things are the things that allow the reward to be, to be extended for us, you know. خَيْرٌ عندي رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا That's a better hope to have. Let's all try, you know, to try to hope for the akhirah. Didn't we say at the beginning of the surah, مَا كِثِينَ فِيهِ أَبَدًا the, the reward of the, of the believers. They'll be staying in it forever, you know, after the big war. So they don't want to win the war. They just want Jannah. That's why they're fighting. So this is, this is the mindset that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to, is trying to instill us with. And so we continue on to Yawm Al-Qiyamah. This is the Thawab Al-Baqi. وَيَوْمَ نُسَيِّرُ الْجِبَالِ And the day comes when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We will make the mountains sail. وَيَوْمَ نُسَيِّرُ الْجِبَالِ وَتَرَى الْأَرْضَ بَارِزَةً And you will see the ground, you know, 
kind of um, in, in, in full flush how, how can I explain this you see the, you see the ground in, in full glory meaning there's nothing obstructing your view no mountains no clouds no plants the ground is bare you know why is it bare uh, we will gather them like you know hashir is the same word that's used for sheep to gather sheep in a, in a, in a place and we won't leave anyone behind you know no one can escape from that day no matter how much no matter how much you want to there's a story of a man in the time of the Prophet he told his sons once I die I want you to take my bones and burn them and once you burn them make me into ashes I want you to spread a quarter of my body to the east and a quarter to the west and a quarter north and a quarter south and so uh, the Prophet ﷺ heard, of, heard, about, heard about this and he asked him, okay, why do you say that? He said, because I'm so fearful of the last day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring me up. I'm so fearful that I don't want to be brought forth for that day. So what the Prophet says, he said, you know, he's, this man has been forgiven his sins because of his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't know how to express his fear. His fear should have been expressed going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He expressed it. In, 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 in the wrong way but at least he's been rewarded for this fear that he has of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of he knows the, the ayat that came down and he knows that there is an appointment as we'll see later inshallah <clears throat> and so they would be uh, put in lines in front of your master you came to us in the same state that we created you from the first time you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us once he, he can create us again uh, even easier, you know. Have you ever, we, we've made this point before. Have you ever uh, done a, a piece of writing or, or uh, solved a problem before? Uh, like a tutorial sheet problem, you know. Second time you come to solve it, easier or harder? Easier, right? We'd imagine it's easier. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us the first time. Some people come and say, you know, how is he going to create us second time? Second time is easier. You know, so don't be, uh, you know, don't be fooled by just because you can't see Yom Al Qiyamah. It d doesn't mean it's a, it's, it's not there. Safa laqad jitumuna kama khalaqnakum awal marra. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala makes the comment: You came to us as we created you the first time. Bal zamtum alla najal lakum mawida. But many of you have said, uh, that you know, have said falsely that we will never make for you an appointment, and it's this appointment that has come. Wudi al kitab. And the book will be placed down. فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا And you'll see the criminals. Al-Mujrimin is someone who did a, a, an, outright, a, an outright crime. You know? He did a crime that, that's, that's clear and blatant. You know, no one will look at a criminal and say, Okay, this man's not a criminal. He would have killed someone. He would have done a, you know, a big injustice. That's what a criminal is. مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ and they'll be so afraid. Mushfiqeen is normally used when you're afraid for someone. So I could be, it's even used positively. So I could say, I am mushfiq on you know, uh, my family. I'm afraid for them. Uh, I want all good to happen to them, inshallah. And so, uh, so they are afraid over something. But what, what are they afraid of? What are they afraid over? You know, anyone? What are these, what are these criminals afraid over? Afraid for? Yeah, but they're afraid for something. They're afraid of something, but also afraid for something. So I'm afraid of the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it afflicts for themselves. On that day, the Prophet said that everyone will say, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself. Only one person will say uh, something different. Ummati, Ummati. And that's the Prophet. He'll, he'll be concerned for his Ummah. But everyone else will be concerned for themselves. Nafsi, Nafsi. Mimma fihi. And they're. You know, they're so afraid of what they find in it. On that day, uh, they won't know where the book comes from. Wudi' is actually passive form. So it, it means that we don't, we don't know who, 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 who put the book, who placed the book. It says the book has been placed. And this is the book of good deeds and bad deeds from the tafsir. So they won't know who put that book. Some people will find it in front of them. And they'll see good actions in it. And they say, and, and, and you know, They'll, they'll run around screaming in, in, uh, in excitement. You know, they raise their book up high and they say, Oh, look at my book. 
you know it's like have you ever come out of an an exam you know and you and you know you uh you got like a, a for what happened like a hundred percent or like ninety five percent or like an insanely high grade right and then you kind of you kind of want to show it off so you so you kind of on the way back to you know wherever you're going to you kind of drop it and say oh oops and you and you hope that it hopes that it drops on the right side you know so that people can see other people they get that 50 or they get whatever grade that they got that they don't that they don't really like they want to hide it where do they put it they want to hide their book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they put it behind their backs with their left hand their left hand indicating that they did uh, actions that didn't please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ And so they say So uh, So when it says يَقُولُونَ uh, Notice that it's, it shifts from the past tense to the present tense وُضِعَ الْكِتَاب Past tense You know تَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ وَيَقُولُونَ And they say It's not they said Why they say they say يَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ You know Oh woe unto us What is this book? You know what? What is this book for us? Mali had al kitab. What's wrong with this book? لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة. It doesn't leave no small deed nor big deed. إلا أحصاها except that it counted it in full. أحصى. You know, using the Quran, وأحصى كل شيء عدد. Allah has full knowledge over every count of something. You know, we also saw at the beginning of the surah. You know, how many were they? Uh, who had more encompassing knowledge so this book has encompassing knowledge of every small and big deed and so why do they say يقولون? it's because they'll continually say it they have nothing else on their mind except to say this one thing يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ or woe unto us or we are doomed basically you know مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً it doesn't leave صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرًا a small thing or a big thing. Notice the same word used twice. فَلَمْ نُغَادِرْ مِنْهُمْ And this book also. لَمْ لَا يُغَادِرْ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا And they found and they found everything that they did. Whatever they did. مَا عَمِلُوا Not الَّذِي عَمِلُوا مَا عَمِلُوا Whatever they did. To see that you know people have different actions. Some people have good actions. Some people have bad actions. Some people have different type of good actions. As we'll see with the story of Musa alayhi salam. Both of them want to do ihsan. Musa and al Khidr has different type of ihsan for people. You know, he has an ihsan where you, you don't see it until the truth comes out later on. Uh, Musa alayhi salam likes to do ihsan, uh, you know, kind of uh, immediate for people to, to give them to you know to give them good. And so, بل زعمتم ألا نجعل لكم موعدا ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرة ولا يظلم ربك أحدا And Allah does not wrong anyone. Allah is not unjust in the slightest to, to anyone. You know. So you have let's let's make a spectrum here. Let's imagine a spectrum. Uh, I could draw it on the board, but I think it's overkill. So I'll just I'll just say it here. So let's see to the to the right. Your right. This is positive. Should I draw on the board? Okay. Uh, to, to, to your right This is positive This is mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right This is very positive In the middle There is adil or qist This is justice And to your left There is injustice Who does injustice? The criminals Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only does Is never in the negative Is never unjust Even to the criminals And even to those who have done injustice uh, Injustice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never, will never wrong them he will either give mercy to his slaves or he will give justice to the criminals. You know? So that's the standard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set in this world and the next. That's the standard that the Quran also wants to keep us by. Umar anhu said to his people, uh, you know, when he became Amir al Mu'minin, he said, Ma aratu fikum illa al adl. I don't want anything from you except one thing al adl, justice. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to, um, you know, wants, wants Islam to spread in the land. Justice and injustice is, you know, zulm kabir. You know, this is injustice is when, even in the small things, putting something in in the wrong place. The the meaning of injustice is to put something where it doesn't belong. You know, so an injustice is not being the best to your parents. I think I mentioned this before. Allah Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Qul ta'ala wa ma harama rabbukum alaykum." Say, come. I, I think I've told uh, someone before. Say, come. 
uh, let me tell you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram on you. Allah ta'budu, Allah tushriku bihi shay'a. Number one, don't associate pardons with Allah. Wa bil walidayni ihsana. And be, your, and be the best to your parents. Is it, being the best to your parents, is that haram? No, being the best to your parents is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And so what is he implying? He's implying that being anything but the best to your parents is haram, is dhulm. Putting your efforts in someone else besides your parents is dhulm. For example, this is, this, you know, this is adil. Uh, I think I mentioned before because, you know, your parents are, after Allah, the, uh, the reason for, your, exi- the reason for your, you know, your presence. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts everything, gives everyone his right. In this, uh, you know, through, in the Quran, through the sharia, uh, it, it will be in this world. But if someone is unjust in the next world, we'll see the justice. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ And so this is compared to the Isra, where it says, uh, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ قَالَ أَأَسْجُدُوا لِمَنْ خَلَقَتَ الطِّينَ So Al-Isra, Surah Al-Isra starts with Bani Israel. And so the context in which it's revealed is a discussion with the Jews. Al-Kahf started with وَيُنْثِرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدَ People who said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken sons or, or has taken a son. And so who are those? Who say that Allah has taken a son? The Christians. Right? And so this, uh, and so each one is kind of tailored to one. So the Jews, what, were the, what was their problem? It was arrogance when the Prophet ﷺ came to the Jews. Uh, uh, you know, they didn't, they, many of them didn't accept him. Why? Because of their arrogance. He said, he's an Arab. He's not from Bani Israel, you know, where they expected him to be from. And so it was their arrogance that led them away. Uh, so so in, in Surah Al-Isra, um, Iblis, La'anahullah, he'd say, should I, uh, should I prostrate to who you've created from clay? In arrogance, you know, خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُمْ مِنْ طِينٍ You've created me from fire, you've created him from, from clay. Uh, but in this context, it's different. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةَ إِسْجُدُوا لِآدَمِ And so we told the angels to prostrate to Adam. فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ So they all prostrated, except, uh, except, the, except Iblis. He was from, from amongst the jinn. And so this is tailored towards the Christian uh, community. Why? Because they have their own kind of narrative of, of who Iblis was. They say he was a fallen angel. So he used to be an angel, but then he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so he's kind of like a fallen angel. And there are many other fallen angels and, and this and that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and sets the record straight. He says, Kana min al jinn. He was and he'll always be from among the jinn. You know? And so some people will ask, okay, then why, then why, uh, uh, why would he, uh, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command the angels and expect him to, to follow? Right? But, um, you know, Iblis. You know, he used to, used to be such a, a righteous creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he used to follow all of the commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give to the angels. He'd actually be at the forefront of anything that he'd, he'd command them to do. And so when Allah commanded the angels to do something, he would already be part of that. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them and him a part of it. And so he, he disobeyed. Illa Iblisa. So notice it's Iblisa. That means... Uh, Iblis doesn't have to be You know There's two kinds of illa It's a grammatical thing as well So if someone comes and says Okay um, You know Some people come and say Oh how, how, how does Allah Kind of command the angels And then it says Iblis is part of them Illa There's two types of illa One illa Means you have to be From among them The other illa Could say He's not part of them So let's say uh, We all went Or let's say You know You're in a lecture All students uh, You know all of the students went to the museum, except the teacher. In English, you can't really say that. But in Arabic, you say, you can say that all of the students went to the museum except for Ahmed. And you can assume that Ahmed is from among the students. But you can also say, all of the students went to the museum except for the teacher. The teacher is not a student. But in Arabic, you say that. And it's grammatically, you, uh, you do Arab on it differently. So, Iblisa. كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ So he did fisk of Amr Allah, which is to, to, disobey, um, uh, to disobey the command of Allah outright, you know. 
أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني so do you take him and his followers do you take him and his offspring do you take him and his uh, you know uh, ذريته is, is someone who carries your legacy we said المال والبنون they carry your legacy also ذريته people who carry his legacy they don't necessarily have to be from jinn but there is the um, you know there is the illusion in the Quran that also jinn have spouses for example in Surah Ar-Rahman uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you know spouses in, in, in Jannah uh, for, for the ins and for the jinn awliya amin duni as protective friends from other than me wahum lakum adu it's a question to us you know do you take them as protective friends over me wahum lakum adu and they're enemies for you you know on the day of judgment Iblis will come and say uh, you know, I didn't have any control over you. Uh, you know, all I did is invite you to come and follow me, and you accepted my invitation. Allah subhanahu wa taala is inviting us to obey His commands and to come closer to Him. And so, who, so, so, there's a scale. Who are we gonna? Who are we gonna? You know, uh, accept the invitation of Iblis, the you know the Shaytan, or a bad friend. Or are we going to accept the invitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messengers? Wa'um lakum adu, please. When you said, uh, and you take them as friends over me, uh, is them the oh, Christians yeah. or the people of... Sorry, the uh, Riyata, oh. he's talking about the Riyata, which means the uh, the minions of Iblis. Okay. Yeah. So. But yeah. Bi'sa lil zalimina badala. Bi'sa is used. What a bad thing. We came upon bi'sa before. Um, or or sa'at murtafaqa. Bi'sa and sa'a mean kind of the same thing. This means what a bad thing badala, as, a, as a replacement for those who did wrong who, who did wrong, right? Uh, and so I just want to take your attention guys to something. At the beginning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذْ قُلْنَا He says we لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ We commanded the angels because this is the, this is the place of, of power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When more than one of his you know the Mufassirin say when more than one of his names are are um, are commanded in the, or are used in the Quran, Allah says Nahnu, you know when more than one of his attributes or when it's a when it's a place of of, of great power. So with قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ يَسْجُدُ لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ أَفَتَ اتَّخِذُونَهُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ أو سوي فَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ and so he he disobeyed the command of his Lord. Why did Allah say his Lord? Allah says his Lord because it's something that's so far away from him at that time. Allah wants to distance himself from those who disobey him. He doesn't want to be close to those people who disobey him. And so Iblis was very far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The furthest you can be when he disobeyed him outright. You know? كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ وَذُرِّيَّتُ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ مِنْ دُونِي You know? First person. Or, or yeah... Minduni, you know, I, not we, not Mindunahu, Minduni. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming close to us, saying, I'm right here. If, if my slaves ask you for something, then he didn't even tell the Prophet, tell them. He said, then I am near. You know? he, he, he talks directly to, the slaves, or to his slaves. So this is the same thing that's happening here. Bi'sa uh, lil-zalimina badala. So ma ashadtuhum. So the Christians believe that uh, that God's arm, so that somehow the devil's armies, Iblis's armies, can somehow compete with Allah's armies. You know, but uh, you know, Ma'ad Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Faliyad You know, He says, "Let him, let him bring." Uh, when He talks to the disbelievers, let him bring his, let him bring his posse, let him bring what he has, let him bring, let him bring his bodyguards, let him bring his armies. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, you know, uh, one angel can. You know, can destroy a whole village, or it, or do more than that with the commands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, as if there's a competition. So, uh, which which is of course untrue, but Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala also gives numbers to His angels. He says nineteen, for example, are you know protector over over alayha um, ashar, and that's just to as a fitna for the uh, the disbelievers. Uh, and there's more to be said there, but we we don't want to go into too much detail. So. Um, so also another thing is that um, so the Christians also came and said that 
or, or you know, some people with this mentality, they come and said that, you know, why did Allah even create these jinns? Min sharri ma khalaq. You know, we, 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 uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to distance us from anything that's, uh, from, the bad, uh, from the bad of the things that He created. You know, then why do you create all of this bad? Why didn't He just make everything good? You know, and that's what, that's what some people kind of come and say. I was, uh, I, just, I was just talking about an atheist that I uh, was, talking, uh, you know, was talking to a few years back and he, <clears throat> we were driving through the mountains. And so he looks at me and says, you know, these mountains, they make me believe, they make me believe or they make, me, they make it very difficult for me to be, believe in God. I said, subhanAllah, these mountains are the things that, you know, are, that get a person closer and closer to Allah. Look at, look at his power, look at this, look at that. He said, you know, I don't believe anyone has enough power to create these. You know, so that's the kind of mentality, and so then he was talking about okay, why are there these bad things? Why are there kids dying? Why is there hunger? Why are there you know uh, injustice in the in in the world? You know, so why did Allah subhanahu wa taala create the jinn, who can call on human beings? You know, Allah subhanahu wa taala didn't create them uh, to make life miserable for us. He created them as a test, and sometimes bad things happen to us as. Um, like medicine. You ever thought of medicine, why it tastes bitter? Sometimes medicine tastes bitter. Sometimes you got to take the, the injection to get better. Sometimes you need to do, a, 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 you know, um, may Allah protect us all. Sometimes people need to do, you know, surgical procedures to get better. You know? Uh, so the doctor, is he doing something bad for us or is he doing something good for us? He's doing something good for us, but he's causing us pain. But we think of the long term, we think we have to endure some pain in order to get better. And so all of these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, you know, we have, to, we have to endure a little bit of pain. It's like an injection that we have to take. And then we come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or Allah opens up for us a new path towards Him. And we'll see inshallah how, how this even ties into the, to the story of Musa uh, And you know, to izzu man tasha wa to dhillu man tasha. You raise whoever you wish, and you, uh, you know, you make, uh, you know, you give authority to whoever you wish, and you take away the authority from whoever you wish, and then we say, "Biyadik al khair," with with your hand that is good, inna ka'ala kulli shayin qadir. You know, Allah subhanahu wa taala, everything that He does, if He raises someone or if He takes them down from a position, it's biyadik al khair. That's the belief that the believers have to have. You know, biyadik al khair. Um, and so this leads me to uh, a discussion because we were talking about Surah Al-Isra and we, we mentioned the three... Qu okay, there's another part of the pop quiz. Uh, the three parts of the, of, the, of the question... Sorry, the three questions that the Jews asked um, Quraysh to ask the Prophet ﷺ. Who can mention what three they were? Is this the Yes. MashaAllah, that's enough actually. <laughs> so it was uh, Surat, um, the, the story of the people of the cave, story of Dhul Qarnain, and uh, what is the soul? So in Surat Al Isra it comes and it says, uh, ruhu min amri rabbi. Say the soul is from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that ant we, we discussed how that answers all three questions. So uh, some, some of the Mufassirin they come and say, you know, uh, let's, let's take this a little bit further or let's understand, let's understand the context of this more he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created two worlds he created uh, you know alam al khalq which is the world of the created things this is what we can see what we can touch and feel what we can experiment on you know science and chemistry sorry and biology and, and you know economics all of this is alam al khalq we can study it we can see it we can feel it and then there's alam al amr this is the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't see how they come about. The soul, the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, everything that's in the unseen is alam al-amr. Al right? And so, he, uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and says, you know, this is from alam al-amr. This is something that you don't understand. You, don't, you, don't, you cannot encompass with your knowledge. You know? Uh, so alam al-amr. And notice that people before, or maybe I've made this comment before, is that they come and study Alam al, they come and study Alam al, uh, they used to study Alam al Amr a lot more. They used to study Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They used to study the last day. They used to study the Ruh, 
what, what brings it to life? You know, what kills it? They want to stay away from, from any deed that kills it or any, any situation that does that. They want to come cro closer to Allah, understand His attributes, you know, to even emulate the attributes. And, and the last day, they want to have the most hasanat on that day. They want to have the best mark that they can have on that day. Right? But now what, what do people start studying? Instead of studying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they study the universe more. Physics and chemistry and, and science. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm saying that, you know, the shift in focus is, is, the, is the thing that's bad. Why can't we, stu why can't we study both in, uh, and, and, and each completing each other? You know? And instead of studying Allah, they study the universe. And instead of studying the last day, they study this life. You know? <clears throat> happiness. How many books have been written on happiness? You know, heaps and heaps and heaps. Crazy amounts of books just on what makes you happy. And people have theories upon theories upon theories. There are actually some really good theories. But, <clears throat> and I'm not saying that all of that is wrong. I'm just saying that the focus is wrong. And instead of, uh, and instead of, so we said, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the universe. We said the last day in this life. And what else did they study? Instead of studying the ruh, what do they study? Sorry? The body. You know, uh, they study the body. How many nutrition studies? How many, um, you know, biology studies? Uh, how many, you know, all of these kinds of things. They want to cure the body from the outside. But they're forgetting what makes the body run. They're forgetting the fuel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down from the sky. You know. Uh, we did not make them witness over the creation of the skies and the earth. Nor did we make them witness over the creation of themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not one to take those who misguide others, you know, as backup. I was not one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I was not one to take those who misguide as backup. Right? So this is what we said before. Um, uh, you know, and a day when Allah comes and says, Nadu shurakai, you know, call upon people who, you, uh, you know, the ones who, you, who you've, uh, who you said were associates with me in power. You know, the ones that you said this and this about, they were, you know, we worship them alongside Allah. فدعوهم. So they called them on the last day, they'd be calling, you know, اللات العزة, you know, those are the gods that you, they, used to, they used to worship. فلم يستجيبوا لهم, and no one spoke. Not a single sound came out. You can imagine, just dead silence. They calling, them calling, 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 and then nothing happens, you know. And, and, and so the, their calling is not, uh, is not answered in the least. Uh, and we've made uh, you know between them a kind of uh, a kind of barrier in between them uh, kind of a, a, like a valley a big valley in between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even you know the, these um, these idols that they've taken they, they will speak on the day of judgment in another surah surah Yunus they come and ask you know you, you weren't you know uh, um we didn't know about you worshipping us. They'd come and say, you know, we had no clue that you were worshipping us. And really, you weren't worshipping us. And they'd have a discussion between them and, uh, between them and the people who, who, who did worship them in this, in, in, you know, in this time. In another surah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, you know, the people who were, the ones who were followed as in worshipped, they would want to be the furthest away from those who worshipped them on that day. You know, and so the complete silence. And we've made a, a, a huge valley in between them. And so these criminals are talked about again. They saw the, the hellfire. They have the book. They, they didn't see the book. Why didn't they see the book? It's behind their back. But they know. Since it's behind their back, they know where they're going to. Waqa'a uh, actually implies struggling, that they'll enter in struggling. And they will not find a masrif from it. They will not find anything to take them away from it. You know? Uh, see this word, this is just balagha in the Quran. Masrif and walaqad sarrafna. The same word but used in a different context. Also, another um, interesting balagha. Al mujrimina mushfiqeen, for example. And so uh, you'll see a lot in you know in, in this in this passage specifically. So Allah says, "Wa laqad sarrafna fi hada al-Quran." 
من كل مثل so Allah will say we've we've striked or, or you know ضربة ضربة مثلا this is صرف صرف مثلا so we've uh, we've made clear to you you know we've we've taken you through kind of many many uh, examples so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them example after example he gave them invitation after invitation story after story from one style to the next style people who don't understand the stories he told them with uh, you know with with uh, with a style that's not a story people who understand who people who don't do, you know don't understand with with just like a khutbah he gave them stories People who understand abstract concepts, it's for them. People who don't, it's for them. The Quran comes and talks to every single um, person in, in, in his own kind of special way. The person who's learned can understand it. The person who's not, not learned, he can also understand it in his own way. This is the, this is the style of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Understood for everyone who has a clean heart. And, but people do not listen. right? So uh, the Quran is even, in the Quran, it describes itself like clouds. And so if you ponder about, ponder about this briefly, some clouds are heavy, as some ayat are very heavy. You know? Some clouds are light, some ayat are easy to, easy to kind of grasp and, and, uh, and, and understand. Other ayat are, are extremely heavy on the, on the self to bear. You know? And that's different for everyone. And some, some ayat carry storms in them. You know? And so... Uh, you know, we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, give us, to give us light so that we can, the things that we understand that are made clear for us, we understand and accept them and follow them. Things that are not made uh, you know, clear for us, we don't do jidal on them. Like the people after the people of the cave, what did they do? They just kept on arguing and arguing about how many were there, how many years was it. You know? This is not the ayat, you know, this is not the part of the ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to take, us or take our attention to. You know, so we ask Allah to always give us the right kind of guidance. And so the human being was the most in terms of arguments. He'd give argument after argument. You know, have you ever approached someone and corrected them? Have you ever done that? I'm sure, uh, yeah, I, I, I used to do that a lot. Uh, um, you know, and people used to come and correct me a lot as well. And so. Um, you know, the first response is to get defensive. No, 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 no. I didn't do that. I did that because of this and this and this and this. How, you know, all you want to do is be right. You don't want to be wrong. You know, and sometimes, <clears throat> even when you're, you know, and and uh, and the people who are wrong, they can even make you believe that they're right when you come and try to correct them. You know, uh, I'm trying to think of an example, but like a. Uh, a, a very simple example is, you know, wh what did you say? You said yesterday this and this and this and this, right? And, and then the guy comes and says, no, 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 I didn't say that. I said that and that and that and that. And evidence for that. And he starts giving you evidence and starts convoluting the world. And you're like, you know what? Yeah, you said that and that and that. And, that, yeah? and you maybe even believe it. Uh, some studies have shown, uh, just to put like a, a little bit of science, some studies have shown that when you ask a person a question in a very nice tone, they'd want to answer you, uh, with a you know with a response that you like. So they might even change the facts and think that the facts have changed just to just to make you happy with with uh, you know with with the answer. And if you ask a person in a very neutral tone or even a, a little bit harsh tone, then they tend to tell you the truth more. And so the police had you know the police had to take this into account when they ask an uh, you know. A witness for evidence they would refrain from asking them in a nice tone so that they get the true evidence and uh, so anyway the the gist of it what kind of and what stopped people from believing when uh, when Huda came to them when guidance came to them when this Quran came to them and, and so that they can <coughs> and so that they can repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they ask Allah to cover their sins, to forgive them. All messengers came to their people with one message. One is rabbakum thumma tubu And so repent to your Lord and return to Him. In Surah Hud, messenger after messenger after messenger with the same message. You know, just repent to your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you for this. But people don't want to repent. They don't want to say that I'm wrong. You know, إِلَّا أَن تَأْتِيَهُمْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Except that 
the example of the, or, or, you know, the examples that have come before them, uh, you know, are presented to them. أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا, you know, أو, or or uh, the big punishment comes to them. So what is the examples of the people before? You know, Ad and Thamud, and uh, and all of these nations. They were after a while, after an appointed time, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent destruction upon them. If you read Surah Yasin, it was just صيحةً واحدة. It was just you know, one loud sound, and that was it. That's done for them. Allah didn't mention anything of them after that, you know. It's like he, 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 he mentions that they're like fire that's died down, you know, when a fire is in full, in full glory. After a while, if you've done barbecue, you know this. Um, after a while, the fire kind of dies down. Uh, the fire kind of dies down. And so all you see is kind of like, you know, not even a flint comes out of it. So this is how they're described after destruction came to them. Uh, and so... So they don't repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except when the destruction in this world comes to them or the, or the destruction in the next world comes to them. You know, that's the only thing that makes them come and repent. You know, the disbeliever on the day of judgment will come and say, uh, you know, uh, or, or even Fir'aun, when the destruction came to them, when the destruction came to him, what did he say? Amantu billadhi amanat bihi banu Israel. He says, I believe in what Banu, in, in the same Lord as Banu Israel believed in. Right? Allah comes and says, now when the, when the destruction has come to you, you know, Al-ana wa qad asayta qablu wa kutu min al-mufsideen, is it now that you come and say this? When, you, when you've uh, disobeyed before and you were from the, you know, from the people who, who spread uh, destruction on the land or, or, or spread, um, you know, um, yeah, poverty and, and, uh, and, and sickness and, and all of this. Uh, and if you notice, uh, back to the story of Adam alayhi salam, the difference between Adam and Iblis, Adam alayhi salam, he made a mistake, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, didn't I tell you not to eat from that tree? But the shaitan came to him and invited him to eat from that tree. And after a while he did. What did he say? فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ So Adam alayhi salam learned new words how to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah repented and Allah allowed him to repent and Allah uh, forgave him for it. Iblis, what happened when he, when he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What did he say? He said, you know what? Since I disobeyed, I'm going to make all of these other people disobey as well. Except for, this, you know, except for these individuals who only worship you for, for you. You know, who are ibadaka minhum and mukhlasin. Who are, uh, you know, kind of, uh, in their faith, they only worship you. And we'll see that at the end of the surah as well. Wala yishrik bi ibadati rabbi please. In the situation... Mm. He was um, His repentance came So I, I did ask this question His repentance was not accepted Because he was at the point of dying So uh, you know even the ulama say Once, the, once your soul reach, reaches the throat Your repentance will not be accepted you know? So he was already drowning And in some, and in some narrations You know Um, um Muhammad, Ruh, who is uh, Jibreel alayhi salam, came in and put water and sand into his mouth so he, he couldn't even complete the shahada. You know, because he, because he knows, he, uh, no, sorry, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam was, was scared that Allah, his mercy, would, would beat his, uh, you know, would beat his wrath on even Pharaoh. You know, but, uh, but in this case, Allah comes and says, Al -ana wa qad You know, now is when you come and repent. And so, uh, from my understanding, his repentance was not accepted. Uh, does that answer the question? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, say before. Yeah. Uh, if they asked, had to yeah. Anyone who repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a sincere repentance, is accepted. Uh, did I tell you, th I told you before the story of the man who killed a hundred men. Right? Man killed a hundred men, went to the sheikh. Or 99 men went to the sheikh said, can I have repentance? He said, no, he completed the 100. So he went to another sheikh and he said, uh, you know, I killed 100 people. Can I, can I be forgiven? He says, yeah, but you have to do hijrah. So he goes and he dies in the middle of the road. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, you know, measure, measure distance between the old land and the new land. 
And so even in some, you know, even some understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala struck, struck the ground so that he's closer to the other land, you know, so that his repentance is accepted. That's the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah, يغفر, uh, Allah does not accept shirk, uh, you know, does not forgive shirk. And anything else is forgiven, you know. Another ayah, uh, Oh, you, <coughs> oh, my slaves who have transgressed upon themselves, uh, do not lose hope in Allah's mercy. In Allah, Allah forgives everything and anything. And some Sahaba took this, uh, inshallah, come to you. Some Sahaba took this, uh, you know, as, as very positive. So they even sent letters to their friends in Mecca. When they were in Medina, they sent letters to their friends in Mecca with this ayah. You know, because some people, uh, you know, had, had iman, but they didn't do hijrah. And so they went back into Kufu. Uh So they, they send letters to their friends saying, you know, Allah forgives everything. You, you still have a chance. You know, so there's a question. Is it not true that if someone does something wrong to someone, uh, so he won't be forgiven until mm. that person forgives him? That's a very good point. Uh, Zakallah Khair for saying so, that. So when that man did kill 100 people, yes. he hurt the families of those 100 people. Yes. And how does and those 100 families of <coughs> 100 people have to forgive him? So that specific story, I don't know the details of, of how, uh, of wh- what happened exactly. Um, but if, if you've wronged someone, uh, for example, a person has stolen a certain amount of money, Allah, Allah can forgive him. But on the day of judgment, he's still accountable to the other person until he returns that money. So Allah does not do injustice in the slightest. You know, if you hit someone, you know, and that person doesn't forgive you for it, on the day of judgment, uh, you better watch out for that person. He could take, he could take from your hasanat, or he could uh, say asa also, and then you can, uh, you know, you're in a big, uh, big situation as well, like the people of the two gardens. <coughs> uh, so that's stealing uh, or a debt that you hadn't paid back or uh, killing as well so the sharia has to you know has to be has to be taken further when if you stole something you have to return it back and, and so on and so forth Zakallah khair for that um, that thing so وَمَا نُرْسِلِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ and we don't send <coughs> the messengers except as people who give g- gl- uh, glad tidings or good news and people who warn. The Prophet ﷺ, he came. What did he say? Inna ana, inni lakum, you know, nadirum mubin, Nuh He said, you know, I'm, I'm warning you of a day that I'm scared for you of. You know, I'm scared for you of of, of that day that I have no control over. You know, but justice has to be served. Mubashirin <coughs> or They give glad tidings to who? Who do they give glad tidings to, guys? Believers, and who do they who do they warn? Really, who do they warn? Huh? Uh, it's a, a specific specific group of people. Who do they warn? Uh, who do they warn? Sorry, hypocrites. All of this go on there. One umbrella. Who do they warn? Transgressors. Transgressors. They warn anyone who does injustice, you know. They say that Allah, they, 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 give, they give good news that Allah, in Allah, la yudhi'u ajra man ahsana amala. Allah does not uh, make lost the ajr of, of uh, whoever did a, uh, uh, you know, did a good uh, action. Uh, but they also, they give uh, a warning to whoever transgresses, you know. Uh, <coughs> and so the, the disbelievers <coughs> will argue with you, with the prophets, with anyone they can, just so that the truth is set down. You know? And they took our signs. What are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Isn't the garden a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The garden that He gave the man? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I did this for him, I did that for him, I did this for him, I did that for him. Wasn't the, uh, the story of, of the cave, wasn't that a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he made him sleep for many years to come? And the sun would come and he'd shift the rays away from them and he would turn them right and left 
and it would make it seem as if you know they are awake so people don't come upon them <clears throat> these are all the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so these people they'd make fun of him they say huzwa you know they take it as entertainment between themselves in Surah Al-Mustafeen, they'd go back to their families, Fakihin. Fakihin comes from the word Fakiha, like fruit, which means as if they'd been fruitful. Fruit, when you eat it, it makes you smile, right? That's, uh, you know, Fakiha. And so they, they do all of these transgressions and, and make fun of the believers and make fun of this and that. And they go back to their family smiling as if they did something amazing, right? وَمَا أُنذِرُوا huzwa And whatever they've been warned, huzwa. So justice, what is justice? Really? Really justice, last day, this, 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 this. No, in fact, the messengers came to give good news and to warn of this kind of stuff. Just because you make fun of, the, you know, just uh, if you have an exam and you don't believe you have an exam, but on, exa on exam day, there's an exam, <laughs> right? There's no, you're not going to run away from it. If you try, you're just going to get a zero, you know. Um, you have a deadline, you got to do it. You know, it doesn't matter what you believe. I mean, it's true, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Uh, and who is more transgress? You know, who who is more of a zalim? Who is more of a transgressor? Who is more of an, a, a person who is unjust or, or 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 unjust than than the following? He was reminded of the ayat of his master. Allah sent him specific ayat that he knows he's gonna be affected by. Specific ayat that he knows. Uh, we're not going to be affected by the specific to him. <clears throat> Sometimes, uh, you know, you read the Quran and uh, there's a message for you. But really, if you don't take it as a message for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's, he's just, the ayat are there. Allah sent them down, right? But if you don't make an effort to understand them for yourself in your context, you know, then it's just, you know, uh, just reading. You're not really understanding. It's not going in. You know, so uh, always when you read Quran and you say, okay, this is not relevant for me. No, read it again. Be sure that it is relevant for you. You know, this is the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent it down for you and for a specific purpose. I told you of the, you know, do this when you can. When you, when you need some consolation, when you need someone to, um, you know, to tell you to be patient or, or, or this or that. You know, and you're in a tough situation, open up the Quran to any page. And I assure you, you'll find your answer there. If, you're, if you have a niya sadaqah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, you know, I assure you, you will find the answer there. But as long as you open your heart to it. You know, this is, a, this is, dhukira bi ayati rabbi. He was reminded of the, uh, of the ayat of his, of his master. فَأَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا وَنَسِيَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَا And so he turned away from it. And he forgot all of what his hands put forward. قَدَّمَتْ يَدَا is what he put forward, which is the actions that he put forward. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yunus, it's a very scary ayah, those al-fasiqoon, those who spread transgression on the... On the uh, كَذَلِكَ حَقَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكْ عَلَّذِينَ فَسَقُوا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ You know, it's the it's command of your Lord has been made true, has been made true that those who spread transgression in, in, in the land will not believe. Allah doesn't grant them guidance. You know, who spread, al -al, you know, الَّذِينَ فَسَقُوا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Why? مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَىٰ It's because what his hands put forward, people become defensive, we said before, not because they can justify, anyone can justify what they did. You know, it's hard to say, oh sorry, I forgot. It's hard to say, oh sorry, I was wrong. It's easy to justify with your actions, you know. Uh, why? So why, why is it the case that these people won't believe? And why is it the case that these people don't listen? Inna ja'alna ala qurubihim akinna. We have made over their hearts an akinna. So this is normally translated as a, a veil or a covering. Uh, so uh, a covering so that they, they can't understand it. And in their ears, a burden. So actually a kinna comes from the nest of an eagle. So it's something that's very far away. So we've made on their hearts guidance or, or their, hearts, their hearts themselves have been made inaccessible to them. They cannot even access their own hearts. You know. Uh, and you know, if you climb up to get to the eagle's nest, 
what happens to your ears? You kind of pop your ears, don't you? So it's like a, a burden of pressure comes on your ears. So this imagery in the ayah. But it's a burden on their ears. So after your heart becomes hard, you, you go away from the dhikr of Allah. You go away from Quran. You know, ma'ad Allah. Some people, Allah mentions in the Quran, some people, uh, you know, Allah has mes- mentioned. <coughs> and they kind of have a, you know, like, a, um, like an allergic reaction to it. May Allah not make us among these people. And other people Allah's mentioned and their hearts are open to it. May Allah make us among these people. You know? So he makes like a covering. This is very um, you know This is something that uh, kinda of surprised me as well. if the Prophet himself went to them specifically to um, you know to deliver to them guidance, the best da'i in the world. The best da'i to ever live, the best person to ever live with the best character. And someone who, you look at him, so some sahab would look at him and look at the moon and say, Wallahi, the face of the Prophet ﷺ is more beautiful than the moon. And so this man, if he goes to that specific person and Allah has made a kinna on his heart and in his ears waqara, he couldn't, uh, Allah will not give that person a da'i. Innaka la tahdi man ahbabt. You will not guide who you love. Walakinna Allah yahdi man yasha, Allah is the one who guides. Right? Please. Uh, I didn't understand the part about uh, what his hands put forth. Uh, well, it's, it's the actions that he put forth. Okay, so it's like... Imagery of actions. Uh, so it says, who is more unjust than the one who is reminded of the bliss of his Lord, but turns away from them and forgets what his hands have put forth? Yeah, so why did he, why did he, uh, dis- why did he disbelieve with the ayat, or why did he uh, turn away from the ayat? Uh, because of the actions that he did. Doesn't allow him to believe, you know. Uh, bad actions and bad actions and bad actions take you away from understanding the ayat of Allah. Good actions and good actions and good actions, you'll notice you understand the ayat of Allah better. Uh, you, you'll focus in prayer more. Uh, you know, it's easier to do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It d- depends on your actions. Uh, and if the Prophet himself goes to them, and so they will never uh, be guided. Even abada, ever, ever, ever. You know? Even if the Prophet goes to them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so, you know, read. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so there's an example in the Quran of, of how, you know, the da'wah of the Prophets. Go to Surah Hud. But one of my favorites up till now is uh, Surah Yusuf, where he does da'wah to the people in the prison. And so what happens? People in the prison come to him <clears throat> with a question. We see that you are from the Muhsineen. We have a question for you. Uh, one, two, three, about their dreams. Right? And Yusuf alayhi salam, he comes to them and says, you know, the knowledge that I've been given is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I followed my fathers and forefathers. And he continues and he says, we, uh, we, were, we weren't allowed to, you know, associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you people, you people follow names that you have named. Are, are, you know, are they worthy of being worshipped like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then he goes in and he does and he, and he gives up, you know, the largest part of his answer has nothing to do with the question. Because uh, the, the time when they ask the question is when they're most open to hearing something from them. And so that's the da'wah that he gives to them, right? And then at the end, then he tells them, uh, you know, your dream means this and your dream means this, right? And so this is the da'wah of the prophets. They, were, they weren't just, you know, knock, um, you know, knocking on people's door and, 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 and you know, saying anything. They were they were bil hikmah with real with, with true wisdom they were calling people to, to to Islam. But if people have if Allah puts a heart on their hearts, a seal on their hearts, they won't uh, you know they won't accept it ever. Allah reiterates, Allah is more merciful. Uh, you know, of excessive mercy. If he takes them <coughs> With whatever, you know, with whatever they, they've done. لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ So let's say a person does an unjust act. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him justice there and then, then the punishment would have come to him immediately. But Allah says, بَلْ لَهُمْ مَوْعِدٌ لَنْ يَجِدُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ مَوْعِدًا Instead they have an appointment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you time. You do a bad action, nothing happens to you just yet. Right? You have time to repent, you have time to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have time 
uh, you know, to, to come back. But, uh, but once the, once the mawid comes, once the appointment comes, there's no time anymore. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسٌ إِيمَانُهَا لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ On that day, Iman will, will have no value unless it's, it came before that day. Right? Um, وَتِلْكَ الْقُرَىٰ أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ لَمَّا ظَلَمُوا And those nations, <coughs> we, um, we destroyed them when, when they transgressed or when they did injustice. وَجَعَلْنَا لِمَهْلِكِهِمْ مَوْعِدًا And Mu'ida is said twice here. And for their destruction, there was also an appointment. So if, if they don't believe by a set appointment, this and this and this is going to happen. But what do they say? Most of the nations come and say, you know what, bring your appointment, bring your adab. Even some, some of them in Surah Al-Anfal, they make that dua, Oh Allah, if this is the truth from you, then send down rocks from the sky to punish us. What kind of dua is that? <laughs> right? So, but but this, is, this, is the kind of, this is the kind of mentality. Oh, bring the, oh you know what, if it's true, bring the adab. Well, we, we got... You know, we got this and we got that. We got armies, we can take it. Right? right. And, and, and some nations came to them in form of sickness before they were uh, destroyed. Some nations it came to them in the form of winds. Some nations it came in the form of one loud bang. You know? Uh, and so this is the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exercises justice. Right. Well, al mawil is a tight space where you where you can hide. So they won't even find a tight space where they can hide. Have you ever seen penguins hiding from the cold in, in like a in the winter? And they just like gather together and make like a big circle, right? Uh, so that's kind of mawil. They wanna they wanna have a refuge from the cold. So people you you won't even find that when the when the uh, um, when the signs of Allah or or the punishment of Allah comes, right? And so this is the end of the passage of Allah's justice. On that day, every debt will be credited, and every uh, you know credit will be debited, as they say. Um, justice is not exercised here, as I said; it's exercised in the next world. Um, as there is, you know, devils and unseens and arguments, Allah will also, uh, you know, kind of uh, fulfill all disputes, right? So they, they argue about the. You know how many years it was and how many were there on that day. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will come with the truth on that day and say, "Okay, these were right and, the, and those were wrong." So this is so the, the dunya is not a place for argument about what you don't know. Allah says, "You know, He will um, kind of He will He will give His command in all of the disputes that they used to dispute with." He's talking about the Jews, talking about the Christians. They have all of these disputes. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will bring the truth on that day. So all justice in every form. You can think of an animal that hit another animal with injustice. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give him justice on on the Yom Al Qiyamah. You know, if you stepped in the wrong place and it was injustice, the, uh, just be sure that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give you uh, you know will give everyone justice on on the last day. So that's the justice of Allah uh, Subhanahu wa Taala. And uh, the closest we can come to see this justice, sometimes we can't see justice, as we'll see in the story of Musa and Al Khidr. Sometimes you can't see this justice. Why? Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His uh, justice comes over a long time. We talked about the injection, right? The doctor who, who performs surgery. Sometimes surgery is performed in the world. And we don't see the reason why. We don't see that the sickness, the sickness was growing and, and, and what, it could have, what, what it could have become if, if not this. Also, uh, we don't see what good can come if just, if just we exercise a little bit of patience. Right? And the closest we can come to that is knowledge. And so learn and learn and learn and you'll see more of the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, in Surah Al-Mulk it says, look, look towards the sky, you won't see a single crack in it. That's the just, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do that with the universe, not a single crack, not a single law that, you know, that fails. Uh, all of it just comes together. Then he can also exercise justice in the moral sense, you know. And so in the, in the story of Musa alayhi salam and al-Khidr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, there's some justice that you can see and some justice that you can't, uh, that you can't see. Some good you can see. We talked about alam al-Khalq and alam al-Amr. And so now there's a curtain between you and the unseen. With Allah's knowledge, the unseen, you know, uh, the unseen all makes sense. But without it, you can't, you, all you can see is the things that you can feel and touch and, and, and hear and smell, right? 
So, um, so attain knowledge, and that the, that's the close. You know, the, you'll get closer uh, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's justice. And so Allah kind of in the next story removes this curtain so that we have a peek. Why does this happen? And then we say, oh, it happened because of that. Why does you know why does that happen? Why why did I uh, why did this happen to me? Some people say, uh, you know, I um, I remember in Sheffield. Uh, one there was a group of Christians that came around and and, and gave out a, a leaflet. Okay, what if you had one question to ask God, what would that question be? And so I remember one of the responses being, okay, why did my dog die? You know, I thought that was pretty weird. Like you know, those are the questions that people have in their mind. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, kind of a little bit unveils the curtain to, to to give us a taste of of the the wisdom behind things. And so we start with the story of Musa alayhi salam. After a break that if I take, we have more, no more time. Uh, should I keep going five minutes? Or... <laughs> uh, inshallah, I'll do one or two ayahs, then we can stop for like a discussion. I don't want to overrun. Uh, and so Musa is suddenly... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding the Prophet, reminding the Prophet to tell his people, to, to, to notify people about this. Remember, if Qala Musa with Moses, when Musa alayhi salam told his young man, you know, uh, and, and some people say this is Yusha ibn Nun, Yusha ibn Nun uh, you know, a, a, great, uh, a great Prophet of, of Bani Israel who used to learn from Musa alayhi salam. So Musa was kind of like a mentor figure for this, for, for this man. And, and he was learning from Musa alayhi salam. So it's always good. Part of leadership is mentorship, they say. You know, uh, when you learn something, when you teach it, you retain 90% of it is what they say also. You know, so whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you knowledge, it's important to spread this around. So this is what Musa alayhi salam is. He's a mentor. He said, لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبة. I will not stop. I will not be exhausted. I will not, uh, you know, end my journey. Until I find Majma al Bahrain, which means where the two seas come together. Or I go thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years, lifetime upon lifetime, I will go on this journey. And so once they found it, uh, they forgot their fish. And so the fish took a path into the sea. Why did Musa alayhi salam? Wanna wanna go on this journey to find, uh, you know, to find uh, to find Majma al Bahrain where the two seas cross, and what and what what does mentorship have to do with it, you know, what does this fish, um, you know, what's the importance of this fish going out, and what's the story behind all of this? Inshallah, next time we will link it and and uh, and understand how uh, all of this links to knowledge. In some way. Um, Alhamdulillah, we have one more session. Inshallah, we can do it. Bismillah. Jazakum Allah khair. Any uh, any uh, comments from the uh, from the from the our circle? Yes, please. Amazing story. Uh, 
we said first point of action is with your hand if you cannot uh, do it with your you know with your actions with your hand i.e. I. your actions then you then you do it with your uh, with your tongue if you cannot do that then with your heart there's a story of a bus driver it reminds me of a story of a bus driver uh, when he was giving the uh, uh, change back he gave like one or two pence more one or two cents more to the to the um, to the person and so um, and so everyone would you know would look at this and and, and you know not take not take uh, heed of it or, or not even notice it but one man when he came to count his money he saw that there was one you know one one pence more or one, or one cent more and so he, he went running back to the bus driver before he left he said no 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 this is this is yours this is yours and so the bus driver uh, he was shocked he said you know I've been uh, you know you're the first person that actually came back with it so he, he meant to give him a little bit more but he wanted to find a person in you know in the land or in any in, in his experience that would give it back and so he said why did you give it back he said because Islam my religion commands me to do this and this and this and this and so he said wallahi this is the religion I was looking for from before and so I think it uh, as the story goes, it was a path for him to, to enter Islam later on. SubhanAllah. So this is the this justice that uh, the Islam comes with. Any more comments? Please. Jibril because he was he was from a part of the you know Mufsidin and so Jibril wanted um, wanted Firaun to be you know paid back for all of his actions that he did um, you know you can't go down the road and tell someone this will you know this guy's going to Jannah this guy's going to you know, Hellfire you can't you can't do that it's Allah's kind of judgment call all you can do is be the best to people right and and, and hope that they that they uh, they kind of repent and so I think uh, part of the wisdom behind it is that you know don't don't judge someone uh, depending on what they're doing and kind of put them into you know groups you know in akramakum and the the best among you is the best in taqwa as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, so it's kind of you know even the, even guidance how much guidance someone has is from the unseen and so don't do, don't make debates of it and don't even you know think about it assume everyone is good um, and you know some people say even assume everyone is more pious than yourself um, and so that that's how you deal with them I hope I hope I kind of uh, um, I think there is more discussion behind this ayah and it's a very interesting one um, but that's, that's what I have for now inshallah if I do more research I'll come back to you with it yalla I think we're two minutes over uh, let's end with the da'wah. Um, everyone for attending.